Hello friends, welcome to Expert Medical Coding. In today's video, we are going to learn about hypercholesterolemia. We are going to see what is hypercholesterolemia is, types of hypercholesterolemia, symptoms, causes, complications, test, treatment and precautions. So, let's get started. What is hypercholesterolemia? Hypercholesterolemia is a lipid disorder in which your low density lipoprotein LDL or bad cholesterol is too high. Now let us see types of hypercholesterolemia. There are two types of hypercholesterolemia and they are familial hypercholesterolemia and acquired hypercholesterolemia. Let us first see familial hypercholesterolemia. Familial hypercholesterolemia is a disorder that is passed down through families. It causes LDL that is bad cholesterol levels to be very high. The condition begins at birth and can cause heart attacks at an early age. Now let us see acquired hypercholesterolemia. Acquired hypercholesterolemia is a much more common condition. It is usually due to an unhealthy diet that contains a lot of sugar as well as saturated and trans fats such as red meat and palm oil. Acquired or secondary hypercholesterolemia is caused by lifestyle factors or medical conditions that interfere with blood lipid levels over time. Now let us see the symptoms of hypercholesterolemia. Hypercholesterolemia has no symptoms. A blood test is the only way to detect if you have it. However, if you have familial hypercholesterolemia, you may have visible signs of high cholesterol and these include tendon xanthomata, swellings made from cholesterol on the knuckles of your hands, your knees or the Achilles tendon at the back of your ankle. Xanthalus mass, small yellow lumps of cholesterol near the inner corner of your eye. Corneal arcus, this is a pale white ring around the colored part of your eye, that is your iris. When the cholesterol causes the arteries to narrow, then most people have symptoms of heart disease, which include chest pain, shortness of breath and fatigue. Now let us see the causes of hypercholesterolemia. The first cause is the familial history. High cholesterol levels can run in families and people with a family member with hypercholesterolemia have high chances of developing the same. The next cause is that diabetes. Diabetes often lowers HDL cholesterol levels and raises triglycerides and LDL cholesterol levels. Both of these increase the risk of heart disease and stroke. Next cause is menopause. Women in the menopausal age group tend to have an increased risk of high LDL and triglycerides and low HDL due to the falling estrogen levels. This elevates their risk of cardiovascular diseases. Next cause is liver and kidney diseases. Liver and kidney diseases increase cholesterol levels. In liver diseases, the liver is unable to break down the cholesterol resulting in the accumulation of the cholesterol in the blood. Next cause is the thyroid disorders. When you have hypothyroidism, your body doesn't make enough thyroid hormones. This can increase your cholesterol levels. In fact, research suggests that even slightly low levels of thyroid hormones can cause a spike in cholesterol. Next cause is the medications. Intake of certain drugs like corticosteroids, anabolic steroids and progestins can also increase the levels of bad cholesterol and decrease good cholesterol levels. Next cause is polycystic ovarian syndrome. PCOS increases the risk of high cholesterol levels. PCOS women tend to be obese due to fluctuations in the hormones and the extra fat and calories contribute to increased LDL and triglyceride levels and low HDL levels. Next cause is pregnancy induced hypercholesterolemia. Pregnancy induced hypercholesterolemia is a temporary condition and subsides with delivery. However, pregnant women with pre existing hypercholesterolemia can experience a dramatic increase in cholesterol levels, which could cause adverse health effects. Next cause is the smoking. Smoking increases the clogging tendencies of LDL cholesterol and decreases good cholesterol levels, predisposing to a heart attack. Next cause is obesity. Sedentary lifestyle is a leading cause of increased incidence of obesity. Obese individuals have high LDL and too low HDL levels. Increased body weight is directly proportional to an increased risk of heart diseases. Next cause is a diet high in fat. Consuming a high fat diet directly causes hypercholesterolemia. Next cause is lack of exercise. Along with unhealthy eating, lack of physical exercise can contribute to reduced HDL levels and high cholesterol. Now let us discuss about the complications of hypercholesterolemia. 
the first complication is the coronary artery disease. Excess cholesterol present in the blood forms fatty deposits in the walls of the coronary arteries. The coronary arteries are blood vessels that supply the heart with blood. As the cholesterol accumulates, it causes atherosclerotic plaques to form, which narrow and harden the artery walls. Next complication is the heart attack. This is a medical emergency. It happens when an artery leading to the heart becomes completely blocked, often by a blood clot, cutting off the blood supply. Part of the heart muscle quickly dies because of no blood supply, but if it is treated quickly, the blockage can be removed. Next complication is the stroke. It happens when an artery in or leading to the brain becomes blocked, cutting off the blood supply. Part of the brain can't get enough oxygen and dies. This can cause disabilities, but getting treatment straight away can lower the risk of long-term problems. Next complication is the carotid artery disease. Hypercholesterolemia causes carotid artery stenosis. In this condition, fatty deposits build up along the inner layer of the carotid arteries, forming plaque. Thickening narrows the arteries and decreases blood flow or completely blocks the flow of the blood to the brain. Next complication is peripheral vascular disease. This is when one or more of the arteries leading to the legs and feet become blocked or narrowed, so not enough blood can reach them. This can make your feet feel cold and painful, especially when walking. It can be hard to walk and the worst case scenario is that the foot needs to be amputated. Next complication is the gallstones. Too much cholesterol in your bile or digestive fluids can result in the excess forming into crystals. These crystals can harden into stones in your gallbladder that can cause extreme pain. Now let us discuss about the test done for hypercholesterolemia. And the first test is a lipid profile test. A complete cholesterol test also called a lipid panel or lipid profile test measures the levels of lipids or fats in your blood. It primarily measures your high density lipoprotein that is HDL cholesterol. HDL cholesterol is referred to as good cholesterol because it helps remove LDL cholesterol that is bad cholesterol from your blood. An ideal result for HDL is 40 to 60 mg per deciliter. A higher number is better. The next component is low density lipoprotein cholesterol. LDL cholesterol is referred to as bad cholesterol. Too much of it can cause cholesterol to build up on the walls of your arteries. This raises your risk of heart attack, stroke and atherosclerosis. An ideal result for LDL is less than 100 mg per deciliter. Next component is triglycerides. When you eat, your body breaks down fats in your food into smaller molecules called triglycerides. High levels of triglycerides in your blood increases your risk of developing cardiovascular diseases. Having obesity or unmanaged diabetes, drinking too much of alcohol and eating a high calorie diet can all contribute to high triglyceride levels. An ideal result for triglycerides is less than 150 mg per deciliter. Next component is VLDL, very low density lipoproteins. VLDL appears in the blood soon after we have consumed food. A lipid profile is done as a fasting test and thus if there is an increased level of VLDL in the blood sample, it can be suggestive of some metabolic disease. An ideal result of VLDL level is under 30 mg per deciliter. Total cholesterol. This is the total amount of cholesterol in your blood. It is the sum of your LDL, HDL and VLDL cholesterol. An ideal result for total cholesterol is less than 200 mg per deciliter. Once your provider rules out other causes of your hypercholesterolemia, they can do genetic testing. A genetic test can confirm familial hypercholesterolemia. Now let us discuss about the treatment for hypercholesterolemia. Lifestyle changes such as exercising and eating a healthy diet are the first line of defense against high cholesterol. But if you have made these important lifestyle changes and your cholesterol level still remains high, your doctor might recommend medications. And they are statins. Statins block a key enzyme in the liver that leads to the production of cholesterol. When this enzyme is blocked, it reduces the amount of cholesterol made in the liver and helps the liver remove LDL cholesterol that's already in the bloodstream. Choices include atorvastatin, fluvastatin, lovastatin, pitavastatin, rosuvastatin, and simvastatin. Next treatment option is cholesterol absorption inhibitors. Your small intestine absorbs the cholesterol from your diet and releases it into your bloodstream. The drug Estemib helps reduce blood cholesterol by limiting the absorption of dietary cholesterol. 
Estamide can be used with a statin drug. Next treatment option is bile acid sequestrants. This medication works with bile in the liver. The liver secretes bile to help with digestion and carrying waste out of the body. Bile is made largely of cholesterol. Bile acid sequestrants bind bile acids in the intestine to keep them and the cholesterol from getting back into the bloodstream. Then they pass in your stool. This reduces the amount of bile acids returning to the liver and forces the liver to produce more bile acids to replace the bile acids lost in the stool. In order to produce more bile acids, the liver converts more cholesterol into bile acids which lowers the level of cholesterol in the blood. Types of bile acid sequestrants are Prevalite, Velcol and Cholesterol. Next treatment option is the PCSK9 inhibitors. These drugs can help the liver absorb more LDL cholesterol which lowers the amount of cholesterol circulating in your blood. Alirocumab and Evolucumab might be used for people who have a genetic condition that causes very high levels of LDL or in people with a history of coronary artery disease who have intolerance to statins or other cholesterol medications. Treatment for extreme cases. If you have extremely high cholesterol levels that are hard to manage, other more treatment options may take place including LDL apheresis. The LDL apheresis procedure is like kidney dialysis. Blood is continually removed from a patient's vein and run through a machine that separates out the plasma. While the rest of the blood is passed back to the patient through a different vein, the plasma is run through another part of the machine that removes the LDL in the plasma. Thus, the blood is cleaned of the bad cholesterol. The results of this procedure can dramatically reduce the LDL level and help the patient avoid heart attack and stroke. The procedure takes about 2-4 to four hours and must be repeated every 2-3 to three weeks. Next treatment option is a liver transplant. This is extremely rare and often considered as a last resort in homozygous familial hypercholesterolemia patients. Now let us discuss about the precautions. Eating a heart healthy diet. From a dietary standpoint, the best way to lower your cholesterol is to reduce your intake of saturated fat and trans fat. Reducing these fats means limiting your intake of red meat and dairy products made with whole milk. It also means limiting fried foods and junk food. Being more physically active. Physical activity is important. At least 150 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic exercise a week is enough to lower both cholesterol and high blood pressure. You have lots of options like brisk walking, swimming, bicycling or even vigorous yard work can fit the bill. Quitting smoking. Smoking and vaping lowers HDL cholesterol. Worse still, when a person with unhealthy cholesterol levels also smokes, the risk of coronary heart disease increases more than it otherwise would. By quitting, smokers can lower their triglycerides and increase their good cholesterol levels. Losing weight. Being overweight or obese tends to raise the chances of increasing bad cholesterol and lowering good cholesterol. But a weight loss of as little as 5 to 10 percent may help improve some cholesterol numbers and other heart disease risk factors. Take medications. If lifestyle changes aren't enough to get your cholesterol levels under control, you may need to take a cholesterol lowering medications as prescribed by your physician. Eat a low salt diet that emphasizes fruits, vegetables and whole grains. Limit the amount of animal fats and use good fats in moderation. Avoid alcohol and manage your stress. Please like, share and subscribe to Expert Medical Coding. Thanks for watching.